So this talk is a bit of a cheat a cheat for this conference because uh, uh, there's not really a Hamilton Jacobi equation, but it's uh, it's hidden, but it's not the focus of the talk. But I decided anyway to give it because I found it fun. So um, so let me. Uh, uh, just one question. I'm getting all sorts of requests to admit people from the waiting room. Am I supposed to do that? You don't have to do anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anyway, so um, let me start with uh, with uh, the stochastic heat equation. On uh, so for me, the stochastic heat equation will be an equation with a multiplicative noise. So what you see is an example. You have the Laplacian plus uh, lambda v of t and x times u. So the, the important part is that t depends, uh, v depends on both time and space. Um, that's a distinction from, say, parabolic Anderson. And um, v for us is going to be some process or um, let's say Gaussian process, which we can take as modification of uh, space-time white noise. So, so we have uh, that equation. And of course, you can do also a logarithmic transformation, and then you will see some version of a uh, noisy equation, some, some noisy equation, which is a version of the Hamilton-Jacobi. So that's a, the Hamilton-Jacobi connection. That's about the end of the Hamilton-Jacobi connection. Anyway, so we rescale uh, the original U, so the rescaled equation looks like that. And um, you will uh, note that the noise itself does not converge to white noise, but rather to some multiple of uh, uh, multiple of, uh, uh, of the white noise. Okay, so this equation, of course, everything is well posed because uh, uh, we started with a smooth uh, process. There is no issue about posedness of this equation, etc. And the important thing for me is that this equation does admit a probabilistic representation in terms of the feynman katz formula, which means that I can write the solution of this equation as the expectation of um, a functional. Uh, in this formula, I see that there's a typo, so uh, x and b are actually the same the same object, so this should have been x2. Okay, so we have a we have an expect we have a representation as an expectation. Now, if v were uh, white in time, which means that we should have understood the equation as some kind of e to integral, then you would get the same expression, but on the right hand side there would be a correction term, which in the white in time case is just this term in red. And the one thing to, to observe is that if we take um, the non-white case, then you would also have some kind of correction term or some type of expression, but that term is, would be non-deterministic. Uh, non okay, so um, another thing I would like you to to note that if I start from initial condition with constant initial condition, namely if I start from u0 equal 1, then the solution to this equation is a martingale. And a lot of the analysis that has been done, um, at least on the stochastic side of the story, is based on this basic formula, in par on this basic fact. In particular, if it is a, if it is a martingale, and it's a positive martingale, then it converges almost surely. So that will play an important role. And um, a few years ago, uh, together with Shiranjib Mukherjee and uh, um, Shamov, we proved that there exists in dimension three or larger a threshold such that when lambda is smaller than that threshold, the solutions converge weakly in distribution to some deterministic limit. 
And in fact, U epsilon converges to a random variable, Z infinity, which is uh, strictly positive. Um, whereas when lambda is larger than lambda star, U epsilon goes to zero. So remember, U epsilon was, uh, was, uh, you could, was equal in law to the time one over epsilon square of a martingale. And so the martingale convergence tells us that you do converge. Um, and the fact here is that you have a region in which you converge to a non-degenerate limit, and you have a region where you converge to uh, uh, the de degenerate limit. And these regions will be what I refer to as weak disorder and strong disorder, respectively. OK. So um, you, of course, um, as, as I will show you later, this result is not really uh, surprising in view of the work that has been done in the context of polymers and discrete polymers, etc. I'll come back to that later. And then uh, um, a short uh, some time after, uh, together with uh, Lenya, Rizik, and Yugu, we asked ourselves, okay, can we say something in both the colored case and also can we say something as a function of general initial conditions? Uh, you cannot really apply martingale techniques or convergence techniques of that type because it's not a martingale. Nevertheless, what we showed is that for lambda small enough, and for uh, people in the in the know, small enough means really in this slide deep in the L2 region. I'll I'll make clear later what this means. Um, there is a re uh, there is a normalization of U epsilon such that after you normalize by it and you integrate, so you take a, a weak notion of solution this uh, uh, converges to a deterministic object U bar. U bar is just a solution of the ordinary differential, uh, ordinary heat equation with an effective, uh, with an effective diffusion A effective. And if you look at the difference between U epsilon and its mean, then again, uh, normalized by the same normalization factor, but then rescaled by a power of epsilon, this converges to some Gaussian process, and that Gaussian process is itself the solution of a stochastic heat equation, but this time with additive noise. So you will note here that the noise is multiplying a deterministic function. U bar is a solution of the ordinary heat equation. And you don't multiply the bold face U, but you multiply only U bar. So this is the Edwards Wilkinson equation. OK, so, so that's uh, what uh, was proved. And, and uh, to do a little bit of justice to the history around it, so at about the same time, there were related results. So there's a paper of Magnen and Unterberger, which uh, uh, gives similar result and applies also to the Hopf-Kohl transform. Uh, so it applies also to the KPZ equation. Um, Related to that, Mukherjee gave an average central limit theorem. So that's a fluctuation part uh, analog of, uh, of the Martingale convergence. And then in recent years, there was a lot of uh, work, uh, um, mostly by Comets, Costco, and Mukherjee, in some various uh, combinations. So for example, there were uh, rates of convergence to the limits, fluctuations from the limits, there were links with a Gaussian free field. All of that was done with stochastic analysis, stochastic analysis methods. Um, uh, more or less simultaneously, but by uh, uh, quite different methods, together with uh, Dunlop, and again, you and Lenya, with Alex Dunlap, uh, you and, and uh, Lenya, we explored links with homogenizations. So that gave both error terms, applications to KPZ, and uh, some expressions for correction, for correctors of the fluctuations. And that also yield, in a natural way, representation of A effective and of the new effective. So A effective, I just let me just point out that 
A effective and U effective or this coefficients here in the in the Edwards uh, Wilkinson uh, equation and in the heat e equation. And very recently, let me advertise some uh, more recent results um, of Costco and uh, co-worker Nakajima and Nakashima, uh, where they uh, extended the law of large numbers, namely the heat equation, to the full disorder phase, and the Edward Wilkinson uh, to, um, to the L2 phase, which I will define uh, uh, a bit, a bit later. There's also in parallel work of Ziguras and co-workers in similar directions. And of course, uh, this would not be complete without mentioning dimension two, where uh, unfortunately there is no weak disorder region, but if you tune appropriately the lambda, you will, uh, you will be able to recover a region of weak disorder and a region of uh, uh, a strong disorder, and of course, dimension one, as is known to many people in this audience, so there's a link to continuous polymers and to uh, regularity structures and all of that. So dimension one is kind of special because it is um, marginally uh, renormalizable, and therefore the theory applies, and you can give a sense without rescaling the parameter. Okay. So in the rest of the talk, what I would like to do, so that's kind of background, uh, and I want to emphasize a polymer con con connection because in fact, everything in my talk will be about polymers more than about the stochastic heat equation. So uh, for that, it's most convenient to discuss the white in time setup. So I remind you what that means. So we take this equation with an Ito with an into term in time. And we look at the solution in terms of the feynman katz formula. And now we take u0 to be equal to 1. And when u0 is equal to 1 and uh, we reverse time, we obtain something that does not depend on the starting point uh, in law. So we obtain the expectation of this object, so B is a Brownian motion, and this is again a martingale. And of course, once you have this model, you can think of a discrete model, which again is going to be what I focus on. And uh, this model of discrete polymers was studied long before the continuous models I described in the beginning were, uh, were uh, looked at. So in particular, uh, in this model, you think of a walk on ZD, and uh, so that's S, SN or SI, and V are just mimicking the, the disorders that existed before, it's, and what mimics better than uh, uh, IID random variables. So uh, you just put here IID random variables, Gaussian or not, it doesn't really matter once you have gone to discrete, and C beta is uh, chosen such that this is indeed a martingale. So C beta is just going to be a constant that depends on beta. In the Gaussian case, for example, it will be beta square over two. Okay, so this is Zn, and it's a martingale, and I want to emphasize that there are two expectations here. There is a fictitious expectation which did not exist in the original problem, which is the expectation with respect to the Brownian motion in the feynman katz formula, and in this case, with respect to the random walk. And there is another expectation with respect to the disorder, with respect to the IID family V of IX. And when I'm saying it's a martingale, I mean it's a martingale with respect to the filtration of that collection of random variables. Okay? So here, Zn itself is a martingale. And it is going to be convenient to keep track of the starting point, so I will call it Zn of x. Of course, in distribution, Zn of x does not depend on x. Okay, so, so we know that Zn converges, it's a positive martingale. And together with the Zn martingale, we also have the polymer random measure, which is a measure on pass. 
So up to time n, this measure of pass on pass is just the expectation of beta v of i s i divided by the normalization z n. Okay. And uh, um, we give a definition by saying that uh, we are in the weak disorder uh, regime if z infinity is positive. So we said Zn converges, Z infinity is a limit. So the weak disorder if Z infinity is positive and strong disorder is if Z infinity is zero. So a few generalities because of Kolmogorov zero one law, it's not very hard to convince yourself that those are zero one properties in the environment. So we said you converge almost surely, but in fact, uh, with probability one, you are either in the strong disorder phase or in the weak disorder phase. And it's also not very hard to convince yourself that this beta is large enough, you will have strong disorder. So um, the main, the main uh, question is, uh, do, we have, do we have at all a region of weak disorder? I remind you that in the examples I gave you in the beginning, all the, or most of the scaling results were about this region of weak uh, disorder. So this problem, uh, as stated here, was imported in the 80s to probability theory from statistical mechanics. And uh, there, 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 were, uh, there was a lot of activity in that. There are some summaries in terms of lecture notes of both Dan Hollander about uh, 15 years ago and Comets uh, a few years back. And uh, let, me, let me now highlight a few questions which, which are natural to, to, to ask in this context. So, one question is, is there a weak disorder phase? As we discussed in the cost context of the stochastic heat equation, when D was one or two, the natural answer was no, unless you tuned things properly, unless you tuned beta as function of N. Uh, you can ask the question, what is the pass behavior under the polymer measure, what I called QN, in weak disorder? What is the pass behavior in strong behavior and in, in strong disorder? And in particular, what is the relation of all that to localization, especially in strong disorder? And as we will see, there is also a very natural subdivision of the weak disorder phase in terms of L2 phases and uniform integrability. So already here we can understand what this means. So we have a martingale. We can ask whether it's uniformly integrable martingale. And we can also, one condition, sufficient condition for uniform integrability is if it is an L2 martingale, namely the supremum of the second moment of Zn, supremum over N is finite, which will imply, of course, uniform integrability. So, so the, the, there are natural questions, and a lot of work has been has gone into those questions. So let me kind of summarize a huge swath of the literature. I'm sure I'm omitting some names. I hope they are not in the audience. Actually, I know they are, but okay. So, um, so what are the uh, what are the results? So, in dimension one and two, there is a strong disorder. Z n goes to zero almost surely. For D larger than three, we saw that for beta large, there is strong disorder, but in fact, there's a phase of uh, weak disorder. Uh, so this is a phase of weak disorder. Of course, the weak disorder phase implies uniform integrability, and uniform integrability is equivalent to weak disorder. So that's a point that is uh, worthwhile mentioning. You could have weak disorder without uniform integrability. It's not a necessary condition that a positive martingale be uniformly integrable in order to converge. So, so in, in, in the, in, 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 for random work on the lattice, this is definitely the case. They are equivalent. And further, as far as I know, it is proved only in dimension five or larger. I'm not completely clear about the status in dimension three and four. There's a gap between the L2 region and the beta C, the, the, the uh, weak disorder region. 
Second fact that has been proved is localization. So by localization, one, one version of localization, uh, which is called weak localization in, in, in some of the literature, is that if you look at the distribution of the endpoint under the, there's an N missing here, so this is under the N uh, pass measure. If you look at the endpoint, then there is a point that carries positive mass. So the, the word weak localization is related to the fact that you don't require it for every N, but you just require it for an average over N or for a fraction of the Ns. But still, localization means more or less what you imagine. Namely, the endpoint is kind of forced to a few random sites. And it is known that this is equivalent to strong disorder. And if beta is even larger, what is called a very strong disorder, this is also equivalent to some criteria that I'm not going to review about uh, how many uh, intersections there are of two paths in the same environment. The weak disorder phase uh, translates to diffusive behavior, at least in part of the weak disorder uh, phase, and that in turn uh, uh, translate ba translates back to limit results for the stochastic heat equation in ways that I don't want to explain today. And it's not, although these results are, are usually stated in ZD, it's not very hard to see that they extend to, to general, to lattices in, in ZD. That's not, uh, that's not hard. But our goal was to see what happens in other graphs. So what we would like to understand is what happens in other graphs, in particular, what kind of properties of the graphs enter into the game. So this is very exploratory. It's really a work in progress, and we are in the beginning phases of it. Um, one of the natural goals, of course, is that you can think of graphs that in their scaling limits will look like lots of things, but none of it looks like RD. For example, you could think that eventually you scale to fractals or all sorts of questions in that direction. But we are very far from that. So, so, so um, what I want to, to show you is that, uh, is that this leads to some new phenomena and new, new questions. Not all of it we, we understand. And um, this is joint work with Clement Cosco and uh, in Barcerussi, both postdocs at Weizmann. Um, and uh, some of my interest in that uh, arose because of work of, of Inbar, of Inbar Serussi, with, uh, with Nir Sochen from Tel Aviv University, where they explored essentially these kind of tools, but with a somewhat different, uh, these kind of models with a somewhat different uh, orientation. Okay, so what is the setup I want to discuss? So we have an infinite connected graph. We have a nearest neighbor random walk on the graph. Um, a lot of what I'm going to say extends to weighted graphs. So you can think of conductance models more generally than, uh, than just, uh, uh, just simple graphs where the weights, where the probability to jump to neighbors is just uh, equally divided among neighbors. And we, I'll come back to that towards the, uh, the, the end. So it's easy to see that some results translate immediately. So first of all, the things that depend on the Martingale structure, of course, extend. So in particular, Zn converges, and the limit exists almost surely. There is a zero-one law. And in fact, it's easy to check that this zero-one law does not depend on the starting point. Now, one thing to note, however, is that Zn of x, the distribution of Zn of x, is not the same for every x, because I'm going to look at graphs that are not, uh, that are not uh, transitive in general. So, so the graph may look very differently from different uh, points of view. Um, weak disorder transition exists here as well. So you have weak disorder if beta is small and strong disorder if beta large. Uh, note that this doesn't say anything about, what is, about whether the, the beta C is equal to zero or not. So that will be an interesting question. Um, the relation between strong disorder and localization of endpoints in the way I defined it is 
preserved still on the graph. So this means that if you want to understand things about the pass under this weighted model, under the polymer model, um, asking questions about whether you're in strong or weak disorder is a reasonable question to ask. And um, <clears throat> uh, it turns out that even in the uniform uh, uh, integrability uh, question, um, things uh, so so you can you can check that uniform integrability for some x is equivalent to having the expectation of z infinity equal to one, but this. Uh, is equivalent to the infimum over all x of the expectation of z infinity being positive. So, so there are, again, uh, I don't want to emphasize that too much, but uh, this is slightly different because a priori, uh, you do not know uh, that the, the, the third condition is a condition over infimum over different starting points, but still uh, this is equivalent to uniform integrality. Now, the last property implies that uniform integrability is equivalent to weak disorder if G has a Liouville property, which means that all harmonic functions are constant. So this applies in particular, um, this applies in particular to the, uh, uh, for example, to the infinite percolation cluster in ZD, which is one of the examples I would like to be able to study. Um, so it's, it's also true that if the graph has some regularity in it, namely uh, if there is a finite set such that uh, the rooted graph at any point x is isomorphic to one of the graphs rooted at uh, v, where v is from this finite set, uh, then uh, uh, uniform integrability is equivalent to uh, weak disorder. So on ZD, of course, this is the case because it's just ZD looks the same from everywhere. On some trees, this is also the case, but in general, we don't know that uniform integrability and weak disorder are the same. In fact, in fact we have counterexamples to that. Okay, so, um, so here are some theorems. Uh, let me... Okay, so here are some theorems. So um, there are sufficient conditions for beta c equals zero. So beta c equals zero means that we don't have a weak disorder phase. So one, which is kind of more or less obvious, is that if G is positive recurrent, then uh, by G is positive recurrent, I really mean the random walk on G is positive recurrent, then beta c is zero. Um, what is maybe slightly less trivial is that if we have some conditions on the heat kernel for the walk on the graph, so the specific conditions are that we have Gaussian upper bounds with spectral dimension d less than 2, and uh, uh, some conditions on volume growth, uh, which is like two-dimensional or less, and some isoperimetric bound for the reversing measure pi, so in the case of, uh, in the case of uh, graphs with bounded degrees, uh, this reversing measure pi is just a counting measure, but in general it might not be. Uh, <clears throat> so under those conditions, uh, you do not have uh, uh, a weak disorder phase. Okay? So for example, certain graphs that scale to fractals in uh, dimension uh, to fractals of the spectral dimension smaller than two uh, will not have a weak uh, uh, disorder phase. The proof, for again, uh, this is just in parentheses, the proof goes by the fractional moment method. You change the law of V in some sets that are visited mass, uh, much, and then you use uh, the fractional moment uh, uh, method to estimate the Radonikodim derivative between uh, the so changed V and the original V. Okay, so recall that beta 2 was a threshold for uh, uh, 
for the L2 phase, namely that the second moment of the N is uniformly more bounded. The, the value of beta 2 is independent of starting point. And uh, um, you can represent it by just uh, working it out. You can represent it as a question about the intersection of two paths in the same environment. In fact, the L2 moment, the second moment of the N, is nothing but the exponential moment of the number of, ex uh, uh, of intersections of two independent paths in the same environment. OK? So, so uh, this is the L2 phase. So here are some results about the L2 phase. So of before I say the results, of course, the L2 phase is a region which is easiest to handle, because in the L2 phase, you can do, uh, you can do computations by, by, exactly by looking at pairs of paths and asking questions about what happens to pairs of paths. In fact, a lot of the results I presented earlier, except for the things I mentioned, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, by Costco, Nakashima, and, 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 and uh, collaborators are uh, in deep into this uh, L2 phase. So anyway, uh, question, is there an L2 phase at all? So uh, if G is recurrent, there is no L2 phase, so you don't need positive recurrent like that. It extends also to weighted graphs if the reversing measure is, is uh, positive. Um, so I, I remind you that before we saw that if G is positive recurrent, then beta C is zero. Here, G is recurrent. It is not clear. In general, it is not true that beta C is zero, but we do know that beta 2 is zero. If G is transient, but you know something about the maximum of the green function, um, then uh, beta 2 is positive. So in particular, of course, this applies to Zd for d greater or equal to 3, because uh, the green function, which is finite everywhere if g is transient, is actually the same everywhere on Z3, or on Zd for d greater or equal to 3. So this is right. This is the analog, but you can you can imagine that there's a big gap between this and the result, any result about uh, say the percolation cluster in ZD. And uh, the third thing is that if the supremum of the number of of um, of intersections of two paths in the in the in the environment is infinite. Sorry, the intersection of two random walks on the graph is infinite, then beta 2 is zero, which means, in particular, that if the graph has arbitrarily long pipes, so by pipes I just mean what it sounds. So I just mean that the graph has a piece like that with a long length L. So, of course, percolation clusters will have such pieces connected to the, uh, to the infinite cluster. And in such graphs, there, are no, there is no L2 region. So this already shows you that, uh, that uh, a lot of the L2, a lot of the uh, techniques that were developed that used L2 computations are not going to work here. So here is a very natural question, which uh, unfortunately I cannot answer, but I'll show you some, some uh, intermediate uh, uh, results. So one, uh, 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 one uh, natural question is, does the infinite percolation cluster in ZD has beta C positive in any dimension? And does it have beta C equal zero in dimension two? So both of these things we don't know. More generally, are there graphs with beta C positive, but beta 2 equals 0? Because if not, then uh, beta 2 we know to analyze. So the short answer to that is yes. And here is, a, here is an example. So I hope the example is, is clear. So you take uh, Z plus D with D larger than 3, say. And on one specific line, 
your glue pipes and your glue pipes of longer and longer uh, of longer and longer lengths and you can see we already know that beta 2 is zero because uh, we said that uh, pipes of if there are pipes of arbitrarily long lengths then uh, beta 2 will be zero uh, but it's not hard to show that this graph has beta C positive, because if you look at the event that A never enters the pipes, then the probability of A is, is actually positive. You look at the martingale, which is uh, the expectation times the indicator of A, so this quantity has a bounded second moment, because there is an L2 phase on ZD, and um, uh, WN will therefore converge to something positive, but WN is smaller than ZN of X, so it's impossible that ZN of X goes to zero. So that's about the proof. Okay, so uh, another fact that is kind of discouraging is beta C is not monotone with respect to adding edges. You could think that adding edges would actually increase, uh, increase uh, variability, uh, but that's not the case. So here is an example. So in this example, you take the same ZD as we had before. You add edges so that you increase conductances in the color coding that I showed. So along the E1 direction, say, you increase the conductances. So you, you put more and more edges. And then by, uh, by choosing your conductances well, you can make sure that with high probability, um, you stay on one pipe forever once you have progressed a lot on that pipe. And that, of course, reduces the model to a one-dimensional model. And in a one-dimensional model, we know that beta C is zero. So you started with beta C not equal to zero, beta C positive. You added edges, and beta C went to zero. So that's another hope of uh, that's another uh, uh, way of not that that percolation is going to be difficult. You cannot say that the percolation model, say the two-dimensional percolation model, is bounded, say, by the Z2. And um, this example also shows that there are transient graphs with beta C, which is equal to zero. And um, um, there exists a graph with beta C positive, but ZN not uniformly integrable. So the, here, is a, here is a graph. So this is a tree. You can have on the left side a, left, a three regular tree. On the right side, a, a, a branch with increasing conductances. And, um, and uh, if you look at the event of no visit to the right tree, then uh, what you see is uh, just uh, a walk on the left three, which is easy to check, has beta C positive. And so beta C is going to be uh, positive, but uh, um, ZN is not uniformly integrable exactly because of the possibility to walk on the right tree. So, so, so that's also uh, this general property that I mentioned in the beginning is really not an equivalence. Okay, so is there a recurrent bounded degree graph with beta C positive? So that's uh, something that uh, we have thought about. I don't have a good answer, so if someone comes up with a, an example, I'll be delighted to discuss it in chat. Okay, so, uh, so as you see, I, I should, maybe I should mention that an important question, maybe more important than that, is uh, what happens with uh, percolation the infinite percolation cluster of ZD. And here we know very little. It's clear there is not a, a beta, a, an L2 phase. So in particular, uh, it's not clear that we will have uh, a diffusive behavior under the polymer measure. And I find this question somewhat surprising, somewhat intriguing. 
Okay, so a good lab for all these questions are random trees. So, so polymers on trees were initiated by Derrida and Spohn. This was for regular trees and directed random walk. And the reason they were interested in it, it's the links, it's, they have, those have a very natural link with branching random walks, branching Brownian motion, KPP equation, and the like. So we are going to discuss polymers on trees in which the walk is not directed. So the setup is a Galton-Watson tree. So each vertex has a random number of children with distribution PK. And the mean offspring number is M. And um, because we want to use it as a lab to a lot uh, to, to some of the questions I mentioned earlier, um, we will discuss lambda bias random walk. So what is a lambda bias random walk? So if you take a vertex, there is the vertex with D children. I wrote K, okay, with K children. So this is K. Then the probability to go, you should think of the conductance here being lambda and the conductance here being one. So the probability to go up is lambda divided by lambda plus K. And of course, the probability to go down, the probability to go down is one divided by lambda plus K. Okay, so there are several facts about, about this. Um, this was uh, explored in the 90s by Lyons, Pimentel, Perez, and again, no. there's quite a bit of literature on that. So this is transient if lambda is smaller than m, and recurrent if lambda is m, and positive recurrent if lambda is larger than m. In the critical case where lambda equal m, if you look at the projection at the distance from the root, so, so this is a tree which has a root and something like that. Maybe something like that. So if you look at the distance from the root, the distance from the root no, no, normalized in diffusive scaling converges to Brownian motion. So this is uh, to reflected Brownian motion. Of course, it's positive, so it cannot be Brownian motion, but it's reflected one-dimensional Brownian motion. And in the transient, uh, uh, in the transient case, there are regeneration times and exponential tails of regeneration distance. Not of re regeneration time, but of the regeneration. So, if you look on the on the path of the walk, there will be points, and once you go over the random points, and once you go over this random walk, a uh, random point, the walk never turns back. So that's uh, that, those are facts known about random walk on these trees. So those, those are not polymer yet. It's just a random walk on these trees. And finally, you recall that uh, I said that some localization properties depend on the distinction of very strong disorder and strong disorder. So very strong disorder means just that the Zn goes to zero exponentially. And uh, by, uh, for a regular tree, you always have a, a strong disorder because the return time to the root have exponential tails if lambda is larger than m. Because, in fact, a regular tree is exactly like a random walk on Z. So it's exactly like, uh, like a random walk on Z plus a burstless chain because you don't, if you look just at the distance from the root, you don't really care on which leaf you have landed. So these are the results we can prove. So, so if lambda is smaller than M, then the existence of beta 2 greater to 0 or beta 2 largest to 0 really uh, depends on properties of the Galton-Watson tree. So in the non-trivial case, uh, um, beta 2 will be 0. So by non-trivial, I mean that the drift down is not so strong as to always overtake the drift up. So what happens in... Uh, in this region is that at some points there will be vertices where the drift up lambda will be stronger than the local number of children. Globally, on average, lambda is weaker than M, but there will be points like that, and these points are going to create some kind of traps, and in, uh, this, in the situation of traps, it turns out there will be no second moment. On the other hand, 
uh, if there are no leaves in the tree, um, an argument using regeneration times shows that beta C is positive. So again, this is a model in which there is no L2 region, even though beta C is positive, which is one of the examples I promised you in the beginning. Uh, on the other extreme, if lambda is larger than M, then the work is positive uh, 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 recurrent, then beta C is zero because it's positive recurrent. But, uh, and, uh, but on the other, but, the, 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 the weak disorder holds only, the, sorry, the very strong disorder holds only on, uh, uh, on, very, on large enough temperature and not all the way to, the, to zero. So that's again a, a difference from uh, the works on uh, ZD. So, uh, or the, trans, the, the, the works with drift on ZD. Now, the critical case, lambda equal m uh, larger than 1, then uh, we believe in general that beta 2 is uh, 0. Um, I don't know about uh, uh, beta c. And I don't know what happens to beta c in the case there are leaves. So in the case where, uh, where there are no... Uh, no, uh, so P0 larger than zero means that you have the possibility that your tree looks like that, that, that it ends here in a leaf. This, of course, creates uh, traps. But unlike, uh, uh, unlike the model on ZD, these traps, it might be hard to steer the walk to these traps. And therefore, uh, I'm not sure uh, what happens about uh, beta C. And the reason I'm interested in this model, besides the fact that uh, one can do something, is that this is a good toy, I believe it's a good toy model for percolation on ZD, which is something I would really like to be able to say something about. Okay, so thank you for your attention. I think I'll stop here.